Greetings, friends, and welcome to this time of guided meditation, a time just to set aside to listen to God's voice. I'm Pastor Dale Peterson, Senior Pastor at Faith Lutheran in Waconia, Minnesota, and I welcome you to this, this session. If you've practiced with me before, you know that I close my eyes for much of the session and invite you, if that's comfortable at some point, to just let your eyes gently close let my voice be background. Let the Spirit take you where it will. This is a time we call restful attentiveness, where we rest. Some of you coming from busy days, schedules, things to do, 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 do. This is a time to be, to rest, to let God speak to you, to have a sense of being in God's presence in a special way, knowing that God is always present. We don't have to set aside special time. We don't have to close our eyes. We don't have to do anything um, because God is always present. God is near, as close as our heartbeat, as near as our breath. The Holy Spirit within us fills us, but there's times like in any other relationship, where we have to focus, to really listen, maybe to lean in, even as we believe God leans in to listen to us. The benediction that says the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you, is this sense that God would be so close we could see God's facial expressions as we can see each other's as you can see in my face, and if we were person to person, I could see in your face the true feelings, the message. It's part of the challenge of this distance learning and doing things virtually is to not be present with one another, to get the full picture. But know that God leans in that God would be close enough that you might see God's features of love, of compassion, of care. And again, that God is so mysterious and so vast that sometimes we use analogies to help us to understand God better. Um, but God is neither male nor female. God is neither... Um, bodily present. We do believe that in Jesus Christ, for those of us that are Christians and call ourselves Christians, follower of Jesus, that God made God's self most clear to us as a person in Jesus. So that for some, that is a much easier concept to grab, to relate to, to picture Jesus who comes to us full of love, looks upon you with eyes of compassion. And Jesus says to you, I accept you as you are. I understand you fully because I too was human. I forgive you all of your sins so that you can start fresh anytime. Let go of those burdens. Sin being kind of defined as missing the mark. And so we are constantly forgiven. And Jesus promises to love us unconditionally, no matter what, forever. And so that's where we rest. This time of restful attentiveness, we rest in the grace that is ours through God's love. God's grace, amazing, that comes to us unearned, undeserved, but unending and unconditional forever, no matter what. And so I invite you to, to rest. We begin our sessions with taking some deep, full breaths. We'll take a little longer this session in silence, paying attention to our breathing, Long, slow inhales, 
in long, slow exhales. Letting our bellies fill with the inhale. Letting go empty with the exhale. Taking deep, full breaths helps us to move our thoughts from our head to our heart. We move from concentration to contemplation. We go from doing to being. From giving to receiving. Opening our heart, our mind, our ears, our love to God. To be attentive as we rest in God's presence, knowing that Jesus looks upon us with eyes of compassion. And so rest. And breathe. If you're new to this kind of practice, it, it can take a while before you can focus, listen to the scripture, be attentive to God's spirit. It seems like thoughts come, what do we have to do next? What's on the to-do list? What did we not do? What did we do that? So this is a time to try and let go of all of that and when those thoughts come in, those distractions come, just let them go by. Let them be like big, white, fluffy clouds in the sky. and Just let them pass. Those thoughts, those distractions, those things on your list, just try to let them pass. Don't concentrate like a big, white, fluffy cloud going by. Beautiful blue sky behind. Do not stop and study those clouds to think about the shape, those thoughts, just let them pass and come back to your breathing. Come back to the scripture, come back to the attentiveness to the spirit. In Romans chapter 8, Paul writes, the spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. The Spirit intercedes for us. There is a constant communication between us and God through the Holy Spirit. And so we take this time, a little sacred time, to be attentive to that Spirit. The Spirit that Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, the Advocate, the Paraclete, the one that walks with us. It's a great promise. We're not alone. We have God in us and with us, around us, so many ways, through the Creator and the Redeemer, the Sanctifier, we often refer to as the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, this Trinity, one God, three persons, always with us. And so I invite you, again, if it's comfortable, to close your eyes, to see if you can feel your weight being held, to, to let your body rest. Let your forehead relax, your eyes droop, your jaw loose. Your shoulders sag, your breath steady and deep, your weight supported, your feet secure. 
rest in the hand of God. A practice called Lectio Divina, divine reading. Take a piece of scripture. I will read it through three times. After the first time, I'll make some comments and a few comments after the second reading. After the third reading, just silence. Silence that is, is full of God's presence. It's not an empty silence. It's a silence that brings uh, completeness, fulfillment, satisfaction, peace, God's shalom. So I welcome you. The first reading, just to get the big picture, the major themes, I'll read today from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, book of Philippians. And I will invite you again on that first reading just to listen to the, the major themes. And then in the second reading, see if you can zero in on what the word God is bringing for you. So maybe one word, an image, a, a phrase, could even be a, a memory or a nudge, but it's something from the Spirit that's coming to you in this time of restful attentiveness, just for you. This is your time with God, God's time with you. So Paul writes, Rejoice in the work in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard, and the peace of God will be with you. Okay, listen to what the Spirit might bring. The scripture in the Bible, more like a compass than a road map. Is pointing us in the right direction, the way to walk. Paul writes, rejoice, rejoice. Give praise, thanks, express joy, worship, all those things. Because who God is and what God has done for each of us, let your gentleness be known to everyone. Paul reminds us the Lord is near. As I said earlier, as near as your breath, as near as the heart beating within you. And then a challenging statement, but a solution. Do not worry about anything. Wouldn't that be nice? Not to worry. But when we have a but in the Bible, it's important to see what says next. Don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So what's under the worry? Worry a secondary emotion, a result of something else. What's under the worry? And Paul says, pray about that. 
prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Move under the worry to that deep place. Maybe it's worry about a loved one's well-being. We move in, pray for that one, making our requests known with thanksgiving that God is with that one. It's a movement from worry to prayer with thanksgiving. And Paul says the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind, what you feel and what you think from deep within and bring a peace that passes understanding. Bring it. We pray, bring that peace which passes understanding because some stuff we just don't get. Things that happen to us or our loved ones are going on in the world. The presence of God within us makes it possible to have inner peace even when there is so much chaos and confusion and discord. And then Paul gives us some things to place our mind on, to sort of set ourselves on a course. He says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think of these things. Another translation is take account of these things. Let that be what soaks in what's true and what's honorable, what's just, what's pure, what's pleasing, what's commendable, what's excellent, what's worthy of praise. It's a reorientation to move from the trap of thinking about all the negatives, all the don't haves, all the violence, all the isms. It's not to disregard those is not important or something to address, but it's an approach to them in a positive way. Paul finishes this little section by saying, keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen. And the God of peace will be with you. As humans, we have the full package. It's thinking and doing. Sometimes it's just time to act. Sometimes it's a time to reflect. But we are called to bring love to others, to reflect on our relationship with God and our self relationship with others. And God gives us all we need. All we need. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen 
and the God of peace will be with you. Just rest and breathe. And see if you can focus on that word, the phrase, the image, a memory, a nudge, a thought. What's the Holy Spirit bringing to your heart? A little gem to carry, to put in your pocket. Something to come back to. Something real. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart, your tender heart, your loving heart, your broken heart, your healing heart, and your mind, what you feel, all you think. God cares. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is pleasing, whatever is just, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen, and the peace of God will be with you. And now, dear friends, may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our living Lord. Amen. Go oh, in peace. 
Thanks be to God.